Thank you for staying with us and a warm welcome to those who just joined us. Now, Home Affairs has extended the validity of the Zimbabwe exemption permits to the end of December. They were supposed to be uh, expiring at the end of this month. But the Road Freight Association warns this could lead to more disruption and violence against truck drivers. Now, uh, let's speak to the Road Freight um, Association's CEO, that is Gavin, Gavin Kelly, uh, who joins us now um, virtually to discuss this further. Mr. Kelly, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. So you say uh, that uh, this uh, is going to cause more violence and disruptions in terms of truck drivers. Why do you say that? Uh, good afternoon, Maseka, and good afternoon to all your viewers. Uh, what we've seen in the last couple of years, over the last five or so That's years, confusing. is that there's a grouping in South Africa who's been very, very clear about the employment of foreigners in the truck sector and in the logistics sector, specifically the sector we're working in. And you will recall, there have been many, many social media reports. There's been all over television and radio, their call for the ZEP to be canceled because they feel that Zimbabwean drivers in this case, using the ZEP, then get employment in South Africa and that South African companies then choose to use these Zimbabweans over South African citizens, there's unemployment, and so their rhetoric goes. And what has happened, as you've seen, they've burned trucks, they've injured truck drivers, there have been some truck drivers who've been killed in these burnings and these attacks, these shootings, and then we've had the N3 and a number of other places around the country blockaded with trucks. So we are concerned that we're going to see this happening again on our freeways and around the country. Mm. All right. So, um, you know, it, we thought that it would be a good thing because uh, the minister is saying that it's because the department is now inundated with last minute applications of, of rather a waiver or a visa to stay in South Africa. And that's why he's extended it to December, because he's trying to make sure that, that he gives uh, the Zimbabwean permit holders enough time uh, to be able to try and apply for these two things. So you think it's not a good thing anyway? Well, I think that's a dangerous thing to say, Maseko, that we don't think it's a good thing in terms mm. of, of what the is trying to do. We understand that there have been some administrative challenges, there's been delays, but this has been coming for at least two years already in terms of the ZEPs being cancelled or not renewed. We've known that this was going to be a problem, hence the first extension that happened this year to the end of June. I think what we're trying to say is that a task team was set up few years ago to deal with this. It had the Department of Home Affairs, Department of Labor, Department of Transport. And in that process, there was a 11-point a implementation plan put together. Some of the issues that are now being raised as being causes for concern that we can't now cancel the ZDPs were there. They needed to be addressed. We are aware that there are legal challenges against the Minister of Home Affairs in terms of the ZDPs. But the thing is this, is that we are concerned that we are going to be exposed again like we have been over the years and that we will be attacked. And it's going to be the compliant operators, those who are trying to do the right thing, who are not employing the foreigners, who are going to once again be attacked. Mm. All right. So uh, what would have been your solution then, uh, uh, Mr. Kelly, in terms of trying to ensure that uh, uh, Zimbabwean permit holders who would still like to uh, keep their employment and uh, their ability to stay in South Africa do uh, if, uh, for instance, this the deadline is already looming. We in June. It was supposed to be until the 30th of June. So what would you have suggested the department rather do? Well, we first of all need to understand why people are not applying. So that's mm. the first cause for concern, is that it seems that people leave everything to the last minute. And yeah. You look at tax, you look at voting registration, people leave things to the last minute. So we understand why that first extension was there. But there needs to be a line drawn in the sand. And the minister has been very clear that if you want to work in South Africa and you're a foreign national, you need to apply for a work permit. Now, if there are administrative challenges, then surely that side of the application process either needed to be beefed up or turned into a far more accessible, a far more reliable or a far more interface style. Of so that's what we really needed to do at the beginning of the year or halfway through last year when we had then said to the holders of ZDPs, listen, you've got six months ending June and then mm -hmm. it's finished.
Mm. All right, so, but just to clarify, um, the association you represent does support uh, the ending of the ZEPs, and you're saying that there's other departments that should be involved in trying to ensure that we don't have uh, businesses that are employing uh, people who are here illegally. Well, that's correct. Remember that one of the biggest issues that the sectors who are, who are now affected by this in terms mm. of those who represent employees who represent drivers, unemployed drivers, are saying their members or their, their constituency are unemployed because illegal foreigners are taking up jobs of South Africans. So we need to address that in the first instance. And then in the second instance, we need to make sure that the South African citizens who hold licenses are then put through a process, either through some CETA, like a TETA, that they can be reskilled or that they can have their skills um, made more modern if they've held their driver's licenses for many years and put back into the work workforce. That's the critical thing that we need to do. Mm. All right. And obviously your, um, uh, uh, your uh, particular part of the business is the most affected in terms of the sectors affected by ZEPs, etc. And probably other uh, forms of permits that government will look into. Uh, so in terms of the ZEPs uh, being a thing of the past, uh, possibly by the end of this year, how will that assist the freight uh, industry in particular? Well, one must remember that his EDP was created for a specific set of circumstances that mm. existed in Zimbabwe. Um, it was really around a, a style of, of people leaving Zimbabwe as refugees. So it gave them the ability to come to a safe country and, and obviously support themselves. We didn't want as a country, I would think, to, mm. to now have masses of people coming in that we would have to look after. So it gave them the ability to work. One would think that the government then would, would follow a couple of processes, and I don't pretend to be a politician, <laughs> but one of them would have been around a process with Zimbabwe, I would presume, to mm. try and resolve this problem. But the important thing is this, that no matter where you would like to work in whatever industry in South Africa, if you are a foreigner, then you need to apply for a work permit. And there are some loopholes around that in terms of, of how people get work permits, how, how that whole process seemed to be a little bit porous, that's now being fixed. Now we need to get to the stage where there's a set of critical, critical jobs for foreigners and we need to follow the proper process of applying for visas. That's the only way that the ZEP is actually going to be phased out and, and then the application process is fair for all of those who want to work in South Africa where mm. there are South Africans who require those jobs. Hmm. The ZEP Holders Association, and I wonder what your response would be. We got a response from the minister yesterday to this assertion by the association. They're saying that if a person has been here for already 10 years or so on a ZEP permit, um, how about they, they be allowed to apply for permanent residency in South Africa? Would that assist anything? They think this would assist in terms of the number of court cases that have gone back and forth uh, in terms of this particular um, decision by government. Well, I think it's, Maseko, anybody who, who wishes to, to permanently reside in a country, in any country around the world, would, would, would have a number of options open. And the first would be to apply for permanent residency, which is the first step towards becoming a citizen. Now, that might, on the one hand, resolve being in here illegally through a ZDP process, which, which would, uh, would have become illegal uh, if you didn't hold one by, by the end of this month. So that is one way of addressing the issue. And probably if you've lived in a country for 20 years already under a legal process, yeah. whether you know like it or not, if you've lived in a country under a legal process, and there are case, many cases of ex-Zimbabweans or Zimbabweans who've lived in the country, their kids have gone to school here, they've grown up here, they've got businesses, then I think there needs to be a process to acknowledge that these these Zimbabweans probably want to become permanent residents. And that mm. process, I'm sure, the process on its own, it's really going to be around the argument that, that Zimbabweans who don't want to become South Africans or are not citizens are taking work away from citizens. And that is the feeling from a huge amount of sectors outside um, of, of our association who represent 
unemployed individuals. That is the concern that we have, that they will become frustrated, that they'll feel that they've been in interacting with government for, for a number of years now. There hasn't been any resolution and they will take to the streets. Mm. All right. Well, Gavin, thank you very much for speaking to us here on ENCA. That is the CEO of the Road Freight Association, Gavin Kelly.